What's up guys? So, I bit the bullet. I bought the ARB Summit bumper for my brand new 2021 TRD Off-Road Tacoma. Let's see how the install goes. Stay tuned. For those of you that don't know, when you buy a bumper, it comes with a bunch of shit. So this is how it came to me. Looks like it was packaged pretty damn well from ARB. I bought it off of four wheel parts. I had it in three days. Compared to the other type of bumpers out there, C4 Fabrication um, and all the other ones, I just, I did not want to wait, you know, that long. So at first the dude walked out with just this box. And uh, I was like, yeah, bro, that's not it. And so, box two of three. So, it not only came with just that, but it also came with this little guy. So, when you get your bumper, make sure you don't drive away in case a guy like my guy didn't know what he was doing and only tries to give you something like that or only gives you this. You need three boxes, at least four uh, the 16 and 21 uh, Toyota Tacoma models. So I'm gonna get this in unwrapped and uh, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. It also feels uh, not too heavy. I mean, all in all together, they said it was like 170 pounds or something like that. I mean, I moved it by myself onto my lift cart. So stay tuned. All right, I got her uncovered. Looks pretty damn good. I checked it. Um, outside of like a little tiny chip on the very very bottom of these sharp edges uh, No damage, which is pretty awesome. A lot of these get damaged uh, Like I spent a lot of money on my road armor bumper for my f-250 and it had a couple little damages to it So in the small box that came uh, There was these three different boxes So this is a fog light wiring loom that comes with it that has inline fuses with a switch and everything all pre-wired for the fog light kit in case you're going to install it on a custom build and you don't already have the uh, fog light wiring on your stock truck next you got the fog lights now take note these are the regular halogens which i plan on changing these bulbs out and i might put like some rigid industries cubes in here or something to custom mount them but they actually make an led kit and they have like one stars. So if that's something that you want to do just for a look and not function, go for it. But everyone that I've talked to in all the forums said that they absolutely suck. So I would just stick with these because they come with it and then fabricate or install your own on there later on. The next in this box, a little more heavy duty box. This is the winch mounting plate kit. So about to open that fucker and see what's in there. All right, so the giant box had a lot of shit. Um, so it had all of the steel brackets and everything that you're actually going to mount to the bumper um, It had the fog light plastic assembly because you not only have the fog light itself with the halogen clear But then you also have the assembly one thing to note is on these in all of the pictures or anywhere else It does not show this cover that came with these So if for some reason you don't have fog lights or it's only an off-road truck and you don't want to use them You don't have this giant stupid hole so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the way that they're mounted, I'll, I'll do a video later on because uh, there's just these three holes, but also they have these new brackets apparently. So I'm gonna dig into that once I uh, read the directions about 30 times before I actually start with everything. But um, I'm really curious if these new LED bulbs and housings, if there's some way that I can fit those inside of here or a set of my LED pods with you know, pretty much minimal ease to make that happen. Um, another big thing that, you know, is pretty shitty, ARB, you need to step it up and uh, I'm definitely gonna call you tomorrow because this is just unacceptable. Literally, that was the biggest gripe of everyone with ARB, with every bumper or rack or anything. They throw all of it inside of this bag, literally. So you get to play the guessing game of what is what. You know, you're spending almost $2,000 on a damn bumper. You get a couple pieces of paper and then shit thrown in here. So that's definitely not good. 
Granted, everyone in all the forums said, hey, if you're kind of any kind of mechanically inclined, you can just take the bolts, lay them all out before you start, and then look, hey, this one takes four, that one takes five, and then you can kind of figure it out. But I mean, you shouldn't have to do that. It should come prepackaged saying, hey, this is bolt number five, and you have 10 of them, use them for this or whatever. So, all right, guys. So, day two, I was tired as fuck last night, so I took a nice long nap for like 10 hours so I could get a good start on this. Got the grill off. Um, for those of you that are not mechanically inclined and can't get this far, don't even attempt this. But one thing that I did notice, um, the sensor for the, the front uh, cruise control and radar, make sure that you remove these little pins and the clip before you try to remove it. If not, you're gonna be sitting there fiddling with it to try to get it off. But yeah, so far. All right guys, so again, I couldn't really find any detailed videos on really any very, very intricate installs on a front bumper. It was kind of like a time lapse or like, hey, here's what it looked like before and now, hey, here's what it looks like now. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna do my own. So down on the sides here, this entire uh, fender well, underneath there are two clips. So even though you're gonna end up cutting it right here, you could mess this up at the top part that is still gonna stay if you don't remove these clips. Let me see if I can get down here and show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> get the light up in there. Boom, those two clips right there, you have to remove, get your hand up in there with the screwdriver and pop them out so that way you can then pull this out away from the bumper to release the bumper away. All right, the fucker is removed. So essentially, everything else is easy once you remove the couple of bolts up top, pull the little push pins out, get all the little screws underneath. The hardest part is the little fender flares over here. So it's got these, let's see this will focus, uh, three clips uh, that have to pop out. And as you're moving this, this will pop back in and you gotta get your hand up under there to pull these back out. But be careful you don't pull too hard because you end up using this. Now on this specific bumper, you're, I'm gonna end up cutting it right here straight down. So if this kind of gets messed up a little, it's not really a big deal, at least for this bumper, but I'm gonna be cutting it right here. The next is these little, uh, the plastic shrouds. So the bumper has little clips along this part that pop into here. So you have to like get your hand underneath of the light assembly and kind of just pull to uh, pop it out. It's definitely a bitch. Uh, make sure that you, if you can reach down in there, um, undo your fog light assembly. Otherwise, when you undo this, it's gonna pull on all that and it could fuck it up. Next, so take this little guy off. It was sitting here, self-explanatory. Pop the little clips out with a screwdriver and they come out. Then you'll be removing this and then you'll start attaching the other things as well as cutting the trim on the bumper. All right, next, an important part that I couldn't find any damn answers to online except like a random ass eBay image. These are the upgraded LED package uh, fog lights with the uh, H11 little plug right here. Um, so a lot of people said, no, you can just take the bulb out of these and then install them in the halogen housing on the ARB bumper, which is not true. This is all one piece. So the bumper came with a couple different attachments to go into the fog light assembly on that. So my goal is to try to mount these inside of the new ARB bumper. Stay tuned and uh, I'll let you know how that goes or if I'll just have to put some LED pods or some shit in there. All right, now that the bumper is off, got most of that shit ready. Next, this piece of paper came folded up. This is for um, the actual cutout on the bumper itself. Um, all the ARB kits come with this. You can also print it out online, but you have to move it to 100% whatever. So if yours didn't come with this, make sure you contact ARB to get the exact way of how to print it from your, your personal printer. So it came all folded up and I had to cut on all of these lines. And you see how it says a line with edge of bumper, cut along the bumper solid line. So this line is what I'm gonna cut. So essentially this is what it looks like. It'll go here along the bumper, fold around, all the way down. And so everything down here will be will be cut. Same with uh, the fog light assembly mounts 
they'll be cut along this little line right here to make it look real nice and from what i'm sure you all have seen before we will keep from like here over all of this and that will stay then i'll put the uh the edge trimming along it to make it look nice um haven't really seen a lot of videos uh about how to do this for arb specific um so that's why i'm going to kind of go into more detail so first what i'm going to do i got some uh scotch painters tape yeah blue right i'm going to tape it all off and then i'm going to put the stencil on trace it with a sharpie and then use my little gun here i got this guy because i didn't want to use a grinder wheel because i had to make a pretty good turn cut so i got this little electric body saw for about 30 dollars from harbor freight so yeah let's get to cutting all right so i got the template on one of the things i didn't say before is um on the front it has a line with headlight whatever and then you flip it over for the opposite side so on this side you can see there's nothing on it and that's how the template works so i taped it off with um painter's tape i put the template on the best way that i've always ever done stuff like this is i tape it as i go along to make it as flush as possible and then it won't move and then as you can see i made the marks on it just like i did on the other side so about to go ham cut this thing hopefully i uh have a nice straight line but yeah let's get to it all right people so i cut it it was pretty damn spot on i was pretty excited um this is the trim that actually comes in the package that was another thing that wasn't on arb's website they actually give you a uh, two pretty big pieces of the door trim so don't go out and buy your own unless you have extras that you want to do um, so as you can see let me go to this side first I trimmed off the a uh, little bit of the fender well so the best way to do it is take the tape lay it completely flat I put some down here in case my blade from my little miniature sawzall hit my paint it, it hopefully wouldn't have scuffed it and I lucked out it didn't happen on either side but then I just laid the tape long ways to make that line real flush with the fender well itself then I came under pulling towards me so that way I could slowly see the blade cut through if you push towards it you're gonna hit your actual paint and you'll fuck it up so don't do that haven't trimmed these yet they say do that last so I'm gonna wait and do that um, but essentially the other side I already got it on looks pretty damn good and then I put a little piece right here just so that way it looks a lot better. Now, runningfortacos.com, they're pretty awesome. I talked to the dude over there. They also offer a military discount on 10%, so that's sweet. But even with the discount, to get it painted voodoo blue would have still been $270 shipped to me for these. Um, or just $150 if you just want black because you're just going to make it an off-road thing. But, you know... It, that wasn't worth it to me whenever i'm realistically never going to use this bumper again so that is why i went this route and chopped it let's keep it going all right so i got the uh bumper brackets installed those are pretty easy using the existing flange nuts uh with the three studs that were already uh built in um so i went ahead and i opened up the bag of bullshit so like i said arb y'all suck it's just a bag of nuts and bolts. So I just took an extra 10 minutes and I laid everything out. So I checked the threads and the nuts. So these ones are American. These are a foreign thread or a metric I should say. And then pretty much you kinda, once you lay everything out, you figure out what goes to what with the sizes of things. So yeah, I'm about to dive into this uh, to get everything else set up and we'll see. All right, so the mounts are up. Um, the little Y bracket assistant guys, this little guy here comes all the way back. That's where the long bolt goes since there's no damn instructions with anything. It pushes all the way through. On the inside, if you feel resistance, there's these little tiny plastic caps. Let me see if I can grab one. These little guys are pushed on the inside of the frame. It tells you to do it earlier. I miss these. So if you feel some resistance, just uh use the screwdriver to just pop the fucker out um next got these little plates here which you can barely see in the instructions that sit there i'm guessing for support for some other shit later 
um, but I have these all kind of snugged up so if I need to adjust stuff I can uh, same with this side also underneath the one picture that's completely blurry you can't see anything is actually for this bolt that goes in underneath where the little uh, subframe extenders were out cut these up like how they explained I just went parallel to the surface and uh, they look pretty good I'm not gonna add that extra little screw in there uh, I feel like they're gonna be strong enough uh, just the way they are so now I'm gonna work on uh, installing the Badland 9,000 pound winch oh yeah everyone right now is like oh fuck Badland Harbor Freight I have them on my quad my side-by-side -side. I had a 12,000 pound winch on my f-250 I've had nothing but good success with Badland uh, if I was a full-time overlander traveling to foreign countries or crazy shit like that, of course I would not go with this. I'd spend a few hundred to get a worn or, you know, a very, very nice name brand winch. But for now, this works for me. Stay tuned. All right, I got the winch mounted. It wasn't too bad. Um, I'm going to see how well I like leaving the bots, the control module where it's at. Um, it's real low pro where it's sitting, so I think I'm going to leave it right there. Um, the holes didn't match up directly to like bolt it down. So essentially what I did is I bent the little paws on the front So it had to sit down and then fold back and then I zip tied it to the existing holes and I mean it's It's not going nowhere. Then uh, I set up everything else uh, One of the weird different things about this one was the the hall spare lead on this thing um, Here is the instructions that came with the winch kit and what's weird is there's only four holes, one, two, and then three, four, which are four directly mounting uh, the winch itself and other bumpers. Then in the center of those two holes, normally there's uh, the fifth and sixth hole, which is bigger to attach your fair lead, whether you're using a synthetic rope or whatever. But this one is different. If you look right here, let it focus, you actually have to drill two holes into your fair lead lower than the middle one. So I actually had to drill into this guy and then the bolts go directly through this into the bottom of the winch. So it might be a cleaner look. I don't know, I haven't really flipped it over. I mean, it worked out really well. The bolts were plenty long enough for it. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm about to flip her over, finish putting up some of the other things on it and then I'm gonna get it mounted. All right. So winch is completely done. Mounted these little guys up on the front. This little guy, um, it takes four little screws. And what I haven't seen in any video, what's really cool about this is you have these little doors and they open up and you can remove that. And they have them on both sides so that way you can reach in and disengage your winch into free spool. Because when it's mounted up here, that was kind of my question. Like, how am I gonna get my hand down there and so that's that's really cool. Um, the way that the winch roller was integrated, um, I had to take the outside rollers off in order to tighten them down appropriately. And it's definitely gonna be a bitch to put those back on at that angle. Um, but we'll see how that is once I get it actually mounted. Um, like I said before, the winch control box, the way I mounted it, I wanted it flush and I think I achieved that just so that way it'll be below my Toyota symbol uh, with my uh, radar and all that crap. The next thing I did, the uh, LED uh, marker lights, these are real simple and those are self-explanatory. All right, so these are apparently the three millimeter packer. And I only figured it out because of the angle of the mount in there. See how there's that slot and it goes up at an angle. Well, this pretty much matches the hole nearly perfectly. Now the problem is you have to put one of these bolts with the washer straight down through and I'll show you in just a sec. The angle, you have to get up inside of there to that top hole. So you have to bypass somehow and get the nut up in there. So what I ended up doing is this. Needle nose pliers, grab the end of your nut, slide it up inside that hole, start twisting on the bolt from the other side, and that's how you can get it up inside of there. 
I know a lot of guys were like just leaving those bolts out because they couldn't get them put in from the other video that I saw that was very quick, but that's how I figured it. All right, so the mounts are on. I haven't tightened them yet. I'm gonna wait till I get the bumper on and then uh, see if I can tighten them and see if that works out better. Uh, I got the grill back on. So it says to cut 18 millimeters off the bottom of it, which comes out to like 11 sixteenths of an inch. Um, and that's mainly only for the edges right here where you can see it's kind of bowing a little bit. But if you just cut off these tabs, they're, they're on the very back right here, all along the back that went into the, uh, the OEM bumper. If you just cut two of these big ones off on either side, you can slide it down in there and it's just going to be bent up just a little. But all of this is going to be hidden. The bumper comes up all the way through here. So instead of wasting your time and doing that shit, just do it that way. So it's on. I still gotta do the fog lights and the skid plate underneath, but I was able to mount it with my buddy and my lifting jack. But I mean, it came out way, way better than I thought. Over here on the side, I mean, it matched up pretty solid. We went back and forth adjusting stuff. Um, sorry for the light. But I mean, we went back and forth, back and forth, and this is like, we weren't gonna get it any better than this, which is almost perfect. Um, yeah, extremely happy with it. I'm gonna continue setting everything else up and I'll show you an after once I'm done. All right, so I have the fog lights in along with the little outside marker lights. Now each little marker light has amber and then white for like little tiny running lights. So you could run the white to your daytime running lights if you have them and then the amber to your turn signals. I'm not a fan of cutting into my OEM uh, wiring harness. So I went online and got the little H11 uh, plugs that are like this. You have a male and a female that just has a ground and a positive that will plug directly into the OEM wiring harness. So that way, anytime you wanna remove this or whatever, you could if you really wanted to. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I did. So this is the uh, female end um, H11 with the ground and positive. This I cut from the original wiring harness for the fog lights. I just cut this part all the way down I, I shrunk it down and then i was able to snip it and steal just the end this is for the halogen fog lights um i think it's like h12 or some shit like that now this guy is to the running light and the turn signal that are now in the bumper these guys right here and I didn't care, I wanted them all wired together. So when everything's on, they're all on. So I just spliced them together. Both the, uh, the running light and the turn signal light, along with the fog lights, will now all be wired into one. So whenever I turn on my fog lights, not only will they be on, but also the little tiny daytime running guy and the amber, so I can control them all by that switch through the OEM factory harness. Um, if someone else wants to wire it different, they could. It's very simple, but I'm just not a fan of cutting into that. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So I skipped a few steps, stuff like that. Um, everything else is pretty much self-explanatory as far as the plates go, putting the little locking nut things on there and then pretty much putting it up in here. So uh, one of the things after I trimmed, I noticed that my little uh, wheel well panels were back a little and when backing up, the tire was catching. So I drilled a single hole at the very top to keep, you know, a lot of uh, strength in it. And then I just ran a zip tie up under real clean looking and pulled this all the way in. Next, you have uh, the light set up and everything. So I knew that the LED lights from ARB sucked. The ones that you could buy to go in there that are like $140. Everyone said that they sucked in all the forums, so I didn't get them. So I just went with the regular setup and I just bought the LED bulbs. These are the ones that I got. Uh, they're the Faren LED lights. They're the 9006. Uh, they come, I mean, they look pretty nice. They had like 7,000 good reviews on Amazon and I got them in a day. 
but you can tell the difference. I mean, you can't really tell on video, but they are bright as fuck. So, and also, I mean, it looks a lot cleaner. Like I said before, the OEM LED fancy ones would not fit in there no matter what I did. And I knew that I could easily fabricate some type of mount, but it would just look like shit because those are like four inches and these are like three inches. I've seen some people do the LED light pods, but for me, this works for now. Additionally, um, I got the rollers on. These are a bitch and a half. So it says take them off in the instructions, mount the plate and then put these back on. Do not do that. Put these on, kind of slide it a little, and then uh, get an extension and just get uh, your 19 millimeter in there and do it that way. I'm also, uh, right now, I'm gonna wire up these fog lights um, as well, the low LED pods to turn on whenever I turn on the fog lights. So stay tuned. All right, so in the forums, there was a lot of issues with these outside turn signal slash uh, daytime running light these four little guys are white and then all of these are amber so I was trying to hook this up uh, Last night and I couldn't figure it out. They just weren't working with the wiring harness into the fog lights well if you look here the um, The way everything is wired up this I took from the wiring kit, but it is wired up directly like how it would be black to black red to white However, for some stupid reason, they're backwards. As you can see, the power is to the black and the ground is to the white. Maybe that's some weird ass Toyota thing I didn't know about, but either way, I'm gonna have these wired in with my fog light, wired in with my LED pods because I live out in the country and I don't care, let's blind everyone. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So after about two days of install time and me doing a bunch of other shit, I was able to finally get the Summit bumper installed. Um, so throughout the whole process, it definitely was fairly difficult. If you're not mechanically inclined, definitely don't try it, just like the instructions say. Um, had to do quite a bit of lifting. Um, I actually have a tool cart uh, from Harbor Freight, can lift up to a thousand pounds, a uh, four wheeler lift or something like that to help stabilize it. And then 100% um, use a friend uh, so that way you just you don't scratch anything. Um, I personally, I kind of, once I got the bumper up close to it, I moved the brackets back and forth a little to see where they were the most centered. I tightened them then even though the instruction said don't do it. And then I put the bumper on and adjusted the height up and down and it came out perfect for me. It might work for you, I don't know. I also immediately switched out the halogen bullshit bulbs that came in them and I put LED bulbs. I also put little LED uh, pods on it as well right above the winch and then I ran the corner running light and the little uh, white light as well um, that's supposed to be hooked up to uh, the turn signals and everything else. I wired all that in together to the OEM fog light switch because at night, fuck it, let's blind everyone. So here she is could not be happier just phenomenal sides very close lines up underneath trimming um, I weigh inside of there up high I drilled a little hole I'll show in the other video where I help pull this in just to make sure that it stays away under here are the uh, the protective plates. Not a lot of people show these in the video. I was really surprised at how nice they were. Now these right here, they are um, amber for the turn signal indicator. Then the last four are white. And here you can see the LED bulb that I switched out. These are the pods that I put on. I didn't want to do the giant ones because I heard a lot of people, or just a single light bar, because I heard a lot of people had issues with the sensor. And also, additionally, um, dudes that uh, have the TRD Pro or put the Pro bumper on these because the sensor is lower, they were having issues because the original uh, spot for the control box, it tells you to mount it and it would be like up here. So it definitely would not work. So. That's something to take into consideration. I actually, I left the bots on the original mount because I wanted it flush and I think I achieved that goal. I also didn't do synthetic just because, you know, for what I'm doing, I'm not full-time overlanding. I didn't feel like uh, spending the extra money on all of that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. 
and uh, I'll try to get back to you. But thanks for watching. I'm really happy with the install.